Hey, this is Carrie with Canary Quilts, and we're on week nine of our Dear Jane Quilt Along. So we are making some progress. We have a lot of progress to go. Anyway, this week I am going to be, well, first of all, I want to say, like I do if you're new here, I am using EQ8 and I'm using the Dear Jane EQ8 add-on. I do have links to those down below if you're interested. Um, but if you have the books, you can probably take some inspiration from what you see here to help you put it together from the templates or paper pieces in the books. I'm not familiar with the books, but I've kind of looked into them. So um, I think that, you know, if you watch what happens here, you might be able to use it with the books. Also, if you don't want to watch the EQ8 stuff that I do here, I have links to the, or I have time codes to the construction of the blocks in the description below this video, so you can go directly to those blocks. All right, for this week, I'm going to be using the color teal. I have pulled out some teal fabrics. These are just kind of representative of the teal color. Mine are a little different than this. But look at this. We have C13 Lakota Sioux as three colors. They've all been two colors so far. So this one is three colors. So I'm going to place these in my color chart here. And then I'm going to talk about a few of these blocks and how I'm doing them. All right, so C13 is going to go right there. We have F9, Autumn Aster. I'm doing variation two. Yep. F9 is right there. Then I have J3 Rick's Volleyball Net, Variation 1. And, sorry, what was that? J3. And we have a basket. J12, Rebe Rebecca's Basket. And then TR9, which is called Needles Point. I am going to modify Needles Point so that we don't have Y seams. I did this uh, a couple weeks ago. And um, I'm going to do it again here. So let's go over to the block work table and I'll kind of go through what I'm going to do with these blocks. All right, I have C13 Lakota Sioux here and I've colored it. I threw a red into my corners. Um, if I can find a red, that's what I'm going to use. If not, I'll just find another color that goes well with my teal. So this is a straightforward foundation paper piece, and that's how I'm going to be doing it. So you can see what it looks like. Pull all your pieces over, and you should be able to print it on one piece. And I print it on newspaper um, print. It does tear easier, I feel. And I have um, the paper I use in the links down below this video um, if you want to check it out. So that is Lakota Sioux. That's pretty straightforward. Next is F9 Autumn Aster Variation 2. So when I looked it up, I think the variations are the petals are a little different shape. So it depends on what shape you want in your petal and maybe how big this centerpiece is. So this is an applique, but I'm going to make it even more of an applique than it is. So you can see the petals are applique. There they are highlighted. And then they have these four outer pieces that are curved in this inner piece that is sewn together. I'm not going to do that. I want to show you what I'm going to do. So we'll go to templates. Let's hit our preview, see all our templates. Let's make me smaller. So I am going to cut a five, five and a half inch piece or block, background color. I am not going to put these five pieces together. So I am going to delete these outer pieces. The other thing I don't need is I don't need eight of these petals being printed. I only need one. So I'm just going to delete all but one. I'm saving the centerpiece. That's going to be applique in. So I am going to make the center an applique, and I'm going to center it on my one block background that I am going to cut out. And then I'm going to cut out eight of these petals, and then I'll arrange everything in this pattern on the block. 
So that's how I am doing this block. So we can get that printed out like that and then you can see how it goes together when I start making this. All right, next block is, this will be an interesting one. I am going to paper piece and I'm going to applique. So one thing that I do need to do is this white section here, it will have curved sections. I'm not gonna print those out. I want to figure out how big this white square is. So then I can put these corners on it and applique this green teal center. So you wanna go to foundation paper print and take a look at this and see the corners are paper pieced and that's really all we need. I am not going to use these curved outer pieces. Remember, I'm going to make one big square to sew my corners on. So I'm gonna delete these. I'm going to save this center section because I'm going to cut that out as an applique and applique that into the center and it should butt up against everything just like that when I make it. All right, so we can print these pieces out and um, when I figure out what square I'm using here, I will um, include that in the cut pieces that I put out each week. When I do my paper pieces on my website, I put out my cut pieces if you want to use the same pieces as I do. So that's how I'm doing this block. All right, next is J12 Rebecca's Basket. This one's pretty straightforward. It's got an applique handle and it's got a couple sections down here that you'll put together. So I'm going to foundation paper piece the background, which is the bottom of the basket, and that's what that looks like, and that's gonna be pretty easy to put together. And then I need to print out the template for the handle, and so that's all I need. I only need the handle. I don't need all the rest of this. So I can print out just my handle template so that I can use it as um, my applique template. So that one's pretty straightforward. And then last, I want to work on TR9 Needles Point. So you can see we will have Y seams here. I don't want Y seams personally because this is a small block, small pieces, and you start turning those Y seams, things start stretching and moving. I personally don't like it. So I'm gonna modify this so that we don't have Y seams. So see this diamond right here. I can isolate that by putting a line here and putting a line here. So now this part will become a section on its own. This will be a section, whoops. This will be a section on its own. Now what we need to do is come up here and I'm just gonna extend this line across to make this part a section and this part a section. So now that I've modified it, let's go back to print foundation. Now you can see the colors. I've created three different sections here, four. I've got the green at the bottom, then the purple is its own, and the pink and then the gold. So numbering. You can see that it numbered it, I think, pretty good. A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. Yep. So that's not what it would have looked like if we had not put those lines in. So we can, we don't need these corners. We can just kind of move things around now, give ourselves some paper space, and we can print this out. So that's gonna make a much easier block to put together than the Y seams that were there before. So that's all the blocks this week. Um, hopefully you learned something in EQ8 on how to maybe avoid some Y seams. And uh, I like to do that. So I'm gonna try to do it every which way I can. So modifying this block does not modify the original block that came in this add-on, that is still there. 
Um, if you would see at the top, uh, it uh, says, it's hard to see, I can zoom in, it says unnamed. So it thinks it's a new block now. So you can go in to, you can add this to your project sketchbook. And then we'll go in here, whoops, all the way to the end. Here's the block I just did, whoops. Here's the block I just did in my sketchbook. And then you can edit its note card and call it uh, TR9. And then you can put reference um, TR9 drawn with no Y seams. So you can see over here when you reference this, and I've got all these other ones I was playing with that I can delete now. So that um, now you know it's TR9 when you look at it. So there you go. That was fun. I like doing that. Um, let me know how it's going for you. Let me know if this is helping you in any way. Um, if you want to share your blocks on social media, you can hashtag Dear Jane QAL, and I will find them and I will share them and let everybody know how pretty your blocks are. But anyway, let's get started with making our blocks this week. All right, let's get started on C13, Lakota Sioux. This is actually a three color block in Jane Stickles quilt. So that's how I'm gonna do mine also. I'm doing it paper piece. We've got some pretty small pieces in here to work with, but paper piecing, that's not a problem. So what do I got here? Just a reminder that any pre-cuts I use here, I will have on my website if you wanna use the same pre-cuts for your paper piecing. All right. So for our accent color, I know that's green, but it's I'm going with teal, this, this dark teal this uh, week. So I've got um, the dark teal as my main color, but this is gonna be my accent color in the corners. She has blue, I'm gonna have this orange. For um, my blue, these rectangles here are what these cuts are for. This is the square in the middle, and these are those tiny little triangles right there. Same with the white, the tiny little triangles and the white inside here also, the rectangles. And then we have our big triangles on the outside. Let me put together one of these here, and I think that will probably be the most challenging part of this block, but it's not even gonna be that challenging. All right, here's the piece I'm going to demonstrate. And I've drawn it out on the back. Seam lines in here, and this is the outside edge with the seam allowance. I've numbered them. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that is per the front of this. So our number one piece is going to be the white. Glad I looked. It's the white, and the number two piece is over here. And I'm just gonna make sure I've got a quarter of an inch at this seam line. That's pretty dang close to a quarter of an inch, so I'll just go almost to the edge of the corner right there. All right, there's my white. Got the coverage I need. My Triangle needs to be oriented this way, so I want to flip it over and make sure I have coverage on this side, right here, and this side. And then we are going to sew on this line right here between B1 and B2. All right, there's my first two pieces. I have trimmed here for my quarter inch seam allowance, and I need to get a white triangle and I'm just going to line it up. I'm gonna line it up on this edge, but it you can line up this corner and this point right here. And then sew on this tiny little seam right here. All right, there's my first three pieces put on. I have come back and I've trimmed to do number four. Number four triangle is gonna be oriented like that. So let's just flip it and we'll sew on the line between B1 and B4. All right, there's my B4 piece. Now I'm gonna grab my B5 white triangle. Again, line it up with the other blue triangle 
And so again on this tiny little line between B4 and B5. All right, now for the last piece, I've gone ahead and trimmed my quarter inch seam allowance. I'm gonna line this up so that it falls outside of these lines on each side. There we go. There's this piece right here. These are pretty straightforward, so I'm gonna do the rest of these and then we'll put the block together. Okay, here's my assembled pieces. And this is how it's gonna to go together. We're gonna to put these two pieces on each side of the center. Then I'm gonna add these and iron towards the strip. Okay, here's my center put together. And I, again, um, I like what I've been doing here. I just kind of came up with the idea to sew within the seam line here onto my paper to hold my piece in place, my fabric in place, and then I cut out per the template, and then I can paper piece them on instead of trying to like figure out how to hold them together. Anyway, we have two here with the straight edges. So those are gonna go on first, and they're just gonna line up from edge to edge like that. So on the line, and I'm going to iron towards the um, corners. So I'm gonna get these two corners on. All right, here's my two edges with the straight edge. Now we have the ones with the notches, and these are just gonna line up, basically line those notches up from end to end. And you can see that the notches fit perfectly with the edge of these corners. So I'm gonna get these two on, sew towards the corner, and we'll be done. There we go, C13 Lakota Sioux. Look how tiny these pieces are. That's what I love about paper piecing. You can really get into really tiny pieces like that. All right, that was fun. I like the three colors, that's pretty cool. Okay, we are on to F9 Autumn Aster. I am doing variation two. Um, this actually is not, in, the petals are an applique, but the center is not, but I turned it into an applique. Um, and I showed you how I did that in EQ8. I um, went to the templates, I printed out just this center piece, I deleted these background um, pieces on here, and I just kept the petals. So I need eight petals, one center. This is what we're going for. And I cut out my background, which is a five inch square, and I creased it on the diagonal. I have taken, I've um, transferred my templates over on diffusible webbing and I put them on my fabric. So now I need to cut them out from my fabric and place them onto my background. So let me get these cut out and we'll start placing this down. All right, I've cut my pieces out, and I don't know how well you can see the creases, but what I want to do is I want to put this on here so that my points all hit a crease, and right now they do. You can see the crease and the point, crease, point, crease, point, crease, point, which means it should be centered, because if you move it any other way, they're not gonna hit the creases. All right, so, getting pencil on my thing here. Let's peel this off, let's get it back down. See if I can get those points back onto creases. Needs to come up just a tad. There we go. All right, so these petals are gonna be centered down here and then we need to leave a quarter of an inch at the top. Let's put a quarter of an inch on the edge of my block. That's about the center. Let's see. Let's do this. No, nope, let's go this way. 
got to read my thing right. Okay. So from the left corner to right here is two and a half inches, so I can kind of eyeball that right there and then put it down so that it hits my quarter inch up there. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the other one. Put my point down here. Let's turn it around. I like this point better. Line up my point. Take it up to the quarter of an inch. There we go. I think I gotta cut a little piece off. There we go. All right, that's how I'm doing it. So I'm gonna finish going around my other edges and then we can fuse this thing down. Right, there we go. All applique block for me. That's how I chose to do it. This is what it looks like. That's what it looked like when I printed the templates out and that's what my block looks like, so. That is pretty. I'm gonna get mine fused down. All right, got it fused down. That's a really pretty block. And we are done. Very easy. Let me know if you did an applique or if you decided to do these curved edges here. All right, let's get started on J3 Rick's volleyball net. This is what it looks like. And I am doing variation one. And I printed out the foundation paper pieces, but I did delete the pieces that go in here. These curved pieces. I'm going to try to make this an applique. This will be the background that goes over this piece, basically. This piece will sit on it like this, and then these corners will be sewn to this. So I'm gonna give that a shot, see how it works. If you wanna try it that way, um, I'll have all my cut pieces up on the website, which is in the link down below this video. All right, let me get set up for this. All right, I forgot to show you my pieces. So um, I have my fusible web onto my green piece, which is gonna be appliqued in here. These corners, um, I need this rectangle for the center and these triangles for the outside. Um, and that's pretty much all I need at this moment. And this is my background square that's going to be in here. So let me give this a shot. Let's see how this goes. All right, let's start with a corner here. This piece is going to be pretty simple. We need a white background and two of these triangles. I've drawn it out on the back here. And number one is in the middle and it's my white my white piece. Lay it so we have coverage all the way around and a quarter of an inch over the seam between one and two. My triangle is oriented like this, so let's flip it over. We want to make sure that we have coverage over that seam line over here. So let's sew on that line. All right, here's my first two pieces. I have trimmed this center piece here between one and three. I want to do the same thing. Uh, let's see, my triangle needs to be oriented like this. Let's flip it over and make sure we have coverage on that seam allowance line. And we'll get this sewn on the line between one and three. All right, that's what our corner looks like. I'm going to finish these three corners and then we'll come back and see how we get them put onto this square I made. All right, I have finished my corners. I've got my center cut out. I put two corners on to make sure this was going to be five inches. And it is five inches. So what I'm doing is I put a crease down the middle of my square here. I have creased these in the middle. And that's how I'm lining these up. So I'm putting my creases together. And your point should fall on the crease also. So I am sewing these on just like that. And I'm going to put these two on. I also put this in here to make sure it fit. And it does fit. So 
I'm gonna get my two corners put on just like this. I've already put these two on, it works. We'll put the center on and then I'll show you what to do from there. Oh, and I'm ironing towards these corners. All right, I've got my corners on. I've got um, this laid out, it's gonna work. So now I'm just gonna peel this off and I'm gonna get it ironed down and then we'll come back and trim our block up. Okay, I've got my applique down. Now it's time to trim our block and we want a five inch unfinished block. So that is what I am going to trim this to. And there we go. That's how I am doing my J3 Ricks volleyball net. Right here. This one right there. So, what do you think? You gonna do it this way? You gonna do it a different way? Um, just let me know. I'm curious, but I like the way I did it and um, maybe I introduced you to a different way of doing it. So, there we go. All right, let's get started on J12, Rebecca's basket. That's what it's gonna look like. This is gonna be a pretty easy one to put together. So, I will put together this big piece. This is exactly the same piece, it's just smaller. I have a large white for B4. I have a small white for the strip down here in A4. These rectangles are in A2. These triangles are B2 and B3. And then these are the two color strips. And then our handle is applique. So I'm ready to go. I'll get this one set up to put together. All right, this is the piece I'm gonna to put together. Our B1 is our color. I, it's plenty big, so I'm just gonna turn it over. Or I'm gonna cover everything, turn it over. I need to trim for B2. And we'll just do that before we get started so that it fits good. All right. So on this one, we have our triangles that we're going to use. They're going to be oriented like that. So we want to put it on. And like I've said, I like to line my points up, this point and that point. And then we can sew on the line between B1 and B2. All right, there's the first two pieces. I've gone ahead and trimmed for B3. We're gonna do the same thing, get our white triangle, orient it correctly, line it up, and sew between B1 and B3. Gone ahead and trimmed for my fourth piece, and that's our big rectangle. I'm gonna line it up so that we have coverage on both sides of that line, and we'll get this sewn on. Big long seam right there. I finished this top piece and I went ahead and finished the bottom piece, which is pretty much exactly like the top piece. And then I cut out my applique. So all we need to do to finish this up is put these two pieces together. We'll just match edges. And I can see that my seams on the basket match. And then I'm gonna iron this open and I'm going to iron, I'm gonna put my applique on and iron it down. All right, there we go. I got this sewn on, I got this applique, I got it glued down basically. I will, I'm appliquing these at a later date. So that was not too hard. It's really cute. Um, I like it. So there you go, Rebecca's basket. We are working on TR9 Needles Point, and if you watched my EQ8 at the beginning, you saw how I changed it so that we don't have any Y seams here. Um, I accidentally printed out these edges. We don't need those. Um, and then the bottom part is on the second page. So let's go through what I've got here. So these two squares will be for these two triangles. This larger rectangle is for this diamond, and then the, this big piece here is for our big piece back here. And then these two long white pieces also go back here. We've got four rectangles that are gonna work in here. Two, these two rectangles are for the top point, and then these two squares will work in here. So 
not too much to really think about here or keep track of. It, it should all fit, hopefully. So anyway, there's all my pieces. Like I said, I put my cut pieces on my website and it's at the link below this video if you want to check it out and use my cut pieces. I think maybe what I'll do is just get started on some of these. Maybe not finish them, just to show you how they get started. Sometimes that's the hardest part. All right, I'm gonna get started with the big piece. I've kind of drawn it out on the back here. Um, my angles are gonna be like this, but we have to cut our angle first. So I'm going to make sure I've got my piece on there. So we have coverage, clip it, turn it over, and we need to trim along there so that we can get ready for our next piece. We can take one of our long background white pieces, in my case, just line it up here so that we can see that when we flip it, we should have coverage everywhere. And then just sew on the line in between one and two. All right, there's my first piece put on. I put the next piece on because it was exactly like that first white piece. So let's move on to this one. I've got a piece here that I want to put on the back and I just need to make sure we have coverage within these seam lines. So all right what I want to do is turn this over like this and we need to go to A1. I am actually starting from the inside out. You can do that on this piece. I'm starting with A2, but you can start with, um, that's what I mean, you can start with A2 and go to A1. All right, so these are the four pieces we want. Let's turn it over. We just wanna line up our piece so that we can see we'll have coverage when we flip it. And sew on the line between one and two. All right, there's the first piece. The other four white pieces are going to be exactly the same as this one, so I'm going to finish this out. All right, there's that piece finished up. Now let's get started on this piece. And I need one of these squares. So C1, this is going to be, um, we're also going to be using these squares. So, all right, so I've got my white and I want to cover one with it because that's what color it is. I want to color white over my one. I want to cover white over my one, my goodness. And I've got it about a quarter of an inch over the seam. Now I want to put this one on and make sure that I've got coverage here, here, and when I fold it, I'll have coverage out there. So that's an easy one to put on, no trimming there. So sew between C1 and C2. All right, there's my third piece. All I had to do was trim and put the other square on. <clears throat> now let's go for our last piece. And you'd think I'd remember to draw these out before I start the camera. All right, so our number one is white. And I wanna make sure I have coverage. And I do. And our square will give us coverage over the um, triangle. So we need to sew from right there and lock stitch out there. All right, there's my top piece. And just like the other ones, I just trimmed it up and added my other rectangle. So I'm gonna get these trimmed up and we can start putting them together. And by the way, that's what we're going for. I forgot to show you, that's what our block looks like. All right, there's all my pieces put together. So we just need to, I'm gonna start from the bottom and work up. I think what I'm gonna do is line my points up. And it looks like we've just kind of got some itty bitty tails over here. So I'm going to do that. I'm gonna line my points up in this one and this one. And then I'm gonna iron my seams open. 
All right, line my points up there, ironed open, line my point up there and ironed it open. This one, I wanna line my seams up right here, the white and green seams. And then sew across and iron it open, we'll be done. All right, let me know what you think. Um, taking out those Y seams, I think it made it very, I think it made it a lot easier to put together and it still looks exactly the same as that. So TR9 Needles Point, very fun block to do. And um, holy moly. And uh, we are done with week nine. Oh my goodness. All right, we made it through another week of Dear Jane blocks. Um, this is becoming really fun. And it's really fun to see how my quilt is coming together with the photo chart that they um, give you in the Dear Jane add-on in EQ8. So um, I also want to know what you think of how I did the blocks. This one, there wasn't much deviation, but this one there was. And this one, there was some deviation. So let me know what you think. Um, if you're going to do it that way, if you're not, um, let me know how you're going to do it. And then we got our basket. And also, I showed you how I changed this so there would be no Y seams. So I think it made it a lot easier to put together. All right, let's populate my quilt. That's what I get excited for. So we have C13. There we go. We have F9. F9, ooh, squeeze right in there. And J3 is this one. Our basket is J12. And then TR9. Look at it, it's so exciting to see it coming together. So if you're doing your blocks and you wanna share them, um, put them out on social media. You can t tag Canary Quilts on Facebook or Instagram. You can use the hashtag Dear Jane QAL. I'll find them there and I'll share them. Or I do have my email in the description down below if you wanna email them to me that way also. Um, so that's a lot of fun. This has been a lot of fun. Let me know what you think. Let me know how it's going for you. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.